What's going on guys? Coach Kev with a frequently asked question section for transformations, challenges, nutrition. These are the biggest questions that are on your mind. We have a list. I have 11 plus probably one bonus one. So without further ado, let's go. So number one, about how many workouts a week should I aim for with a uh, ideal fat loss situation? So good question. The simplistic view is three. Three to four. No more than that. Here's the reason. Uh, quite simply, uh, too much exercise stimulates appetite. So if you're going to be one of those people who um, used to work out uh, but didn't pay attention to nutrition, um, just paying attention to nutrition alone will help you uh, and probably create most of the deficit that you need, right? Because we're going to put you in that caloric deficit. So um, I'm going to say three to four. Uh, if you'd like to do more, fine, but just be wary that the additional cardio uh, or the additional strength training sessions might make you hungrier. So managing hunger is going to be a big part of the six weeks in the journey. Uh, workouts outside the gym. Um, should you do them? If you want. You don't have to. If you're getting in three to four times a week in the gym, the, the two classes and then the one training session or however many training sessions, uh, you, you should be good. You should be good to go. Again, nail the nutrition. The people are looking to outwork their nutrition. But if you're going to go ahead and work out and you're only burning 300 to 600 calories more than your, uh, your, your I almost said binge, but kind of your weekend when you had, uh, you know, 2,000 calories extra on Saturday at that lobster bake, lobster roll, and six Montauk beers, uh, it, it's not happening. So um, you're going to be much more able to reach the goal that you set for yourself um, with the concept of a, a steady caloric deficit on a daily basis. So uh, workouts outside the gym, if you want. Um, I, don't, I don't really have a, a thought there. Uh, cardio thoughts, uh, kind of again with no, questions number one and two. Um, more specifically, um, here's an idea for you. Take more steps. Um, you know, get off a subway or two before, your, a subway stop or two before your um, uh, you know, your normal stop and walk the rest of the way, schedule some time, go on long walks. I know lots of, uh, I have a lot of fit friends that they, they, when it's time for them to get lean, instead of exercising more, they take longer walks. Because weirdly enough, when we only work out in the gym, we don't necessarily get that much uh, uh, walks. I've, I've measured my steps and in, even in the gym, I don't, I don't get a, a, out for that much. So um, that's, that's the recommendation is to not necessarily add some cardio if you want, do it. But uh, guys, it's got to be your nutrition. It's just got to be. Uh, what do I do when traveling? So uh, m multiple thoughts here. Um, you, again, you can work out outside the gym. Try to just maintain your number. So three times a week of workouts, strength training, strength training, strength training. Ideally, you want to add your cardio, fine. Uh, what can you do from a workout perspective? We have lots of resources on our Instagram, on bodyweight workouts, on uh, one dumbbell workouts, kettlebell workouts. You could take a class somewhere. Again, it's not necessary if you're getting your three times a weekend. If you're feeling antsy, if you feel like you want to sweat, uh, one of the things you can do is crank up a treadmill to 15 miles, 15 miles, 15% incline, uh, no hands. Okay, make sure you're not using your hands. 15% incline, no hands, start at about two miles an hour. Try that for 30 minutes. If two miles an hour is not that bad, uh, crank it up to about three miles an hour. That's a steady burn. You'll like it. Your glutes will like it. Um, and uh, I do like that workout because uh, it doesn't really uh, make you that much more uh, hungry. Uh, what protein powder do we recommend? I mean, we're a little biased here. Uh, we do love the Structure brand, uh, Structure Cool Way. Um, it's just a, a great uh, um, brand. It's grass-fed. Uh, it doesn't. It's not exposed to heat, so um, that's hence the cool part. Um, and it's uh, super lean. So it's uh, some of our folks who. Uh, might be lactose sensitive, they found that they're not on this. So uh, kind of a neat little tidbit. Um, one of the common questions, and this, this comes up a lot, uh, here's, the, here's the actual total question. I understand I'm small, but my meal plan doesn't have a lot of fat. Why not? Um, so this usually is a question from the female side of things, uh, even from some smaller guys. Um, when you are eating through your meal plan, you're getting fat from your protein and carbohydrate sources. So let's say you're having beans, there's fats with that. Let's say you're having yogurt, there's fat in that. Even at 0%, fine. But let's say you're having grilled chicken or steak or fish or something. Like whatever you're having usually has fat in it. So the, lean, the smaller that you are, the less fat that you're gonna have within your current meal plan based off of the fact that we're gonna reserve those extra calories 
that you need from a carbohydrate perspective and not gonna cut carbs because you're gonna need those for a workout perspective. So that's, that's kind of the reason. Um, and uh, so that's why this is almost a low fat diet, but you, again, you're gonna have the fat in it. You don't need to eat extra peanut butter if you're on a, a, a small um, you know, a caloric deficit, etc. So don't, don't go thinking you gotta eat uh, you know, two tablespoons of peanut butter and extra virgin olive oil. Try to avoid that because um, those extra calories really add up when you have a smaller um, window. Um, what are the best bars to eat? Uh, so we like the carbs and protein um, to be controlled for. So uh, protein above 20 grams, um, even like 18. Most Quest bars, most One bars, um, the RX bars are okay. Um, I find them, uh, I've, I've, I found them, this is via uh, um, many clients, that they tend to uh, do weird things to your uh, incontinence, et cetera, like, Continents? I don't know, that's not a phrase, but they, they basically tend to make it harder to go to the bathroom. Um, so I'm not sure why, maybe it's the uh, sugar alcohols that they're using there. Anyways, uh, or maybe they don't use sugar alcohols, I don't know, but um, uh, I've heard some interesting things about uh, RX bars. Um, but yeah, so the lower the carbs, the better. Similarly, good question, snacks, what are the best snacks? Um, if it's in your plan, I mean, obviously we like the, the protein shake, um, just because it's gonna keep you full and keep you uh, closer to your protein goal. For a lot of people, increasing their protein uh, does two things. Number one, um, keeps them full. Number two, um, they were not able to get their protein um, before uh, their protein number that they were like, let's say it's 150 grams that they need a day, they were not even close. So this helps you get it. Um, and then similarly, the reason that it's such a great tool, um, the protein shake that is, um, is because let's say it's 120 calories per scoop, which is 20 grams of protein, to get 20 grams of protein from other food sources is it, under 150 calories is difficult. Most bars that are 20 grams of protein are around 200 calories. So if you have seven bars over the course of seven days, you're having 1,400 calories. If you're having, uh, I'm doing the math right now, if you're having seven shakes a week times 120 calories, um, you're looking at 840. So you're looking at a 600 calorie savings on a week by switching from shakes to bar, uh, bars to shakes. Um, so that's again why the, one of the reasons that we're really, really big fans of having the protein shakes. Um, if you want, and if you're curious how to make shakes um, a, a thicker and also B more filling, there's a lot of additives. You can add spinach, you can throw um, all these other things. This is in your meal plan. Um, there's, there's recipe in the recipe guide. Um, I'm a big fan of also just being creative and changing it up. Um, if you have vanilla protein, you can put it with diet root beer um, and have like a root beer float. Uh, it's delicious. Don't knock it until you've tried it. Um, Jordan's going to yell at me for saying that root beer. Um, but if you have one or two a week, you, you're not going to die from the, the aspartame gods. Um, on to next. Uh, what about um, what about juicing? Uh, we're not talking about steroids here, guys. Not that That's a separate topic. Um, but what about juicing, like juice generation, all these other things? The trouble here is simple. Um, they're going to be high, usually, uh, high sugar um, and low protein. So this is something that we want to avoid. Even though it's good sugar, it's fruit, et cetera, um, but you just really want to watch your nutrition labels. Um, if it's all greens, et cetera, and like lemon, whatever, just look at the nutrition label. I don't have an answer here, um, but you really got to pay attention to nutrition. Um, uh, I'm going to switch the order on these last two because the last one is something that I feel passionate about. Um, so eating before bed uh, or after 8 p.m., does the timing matter? So this is a question from, I know who's, who wrote this. Uh, this is a question specifically for um, people who work uh, in odd shifts. So let's say like they work like uh, 12 to 9 p.m. Um, on a daily basis and they want to eat after. They're like, oh, is, all, is everything that I eat after 9 p.m. going to make me turn into, no, there's no Cinderella uh, factor here. Like the clock doesn't strike like eight o'clock and all of a sudden, like you, you, you turn into a, a non-eating pumpkin. You, 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 it's, it's total calories. Like just look at your day, make sure you hit your, your numbers and uh, you should be good to go. So eating before bed, um, uh, eating before bed, I, I, let, me, let me backtrack. Eating before bed is not necessarily a good idea though because it is a stimulant, right? So every time that you eat, your, your metabolic processes um, uh, all increase. So you're technically uh, stimulating um, your metabolism. So might not be the best thing a half hour before bed, 
right? So what we recommend for people is about three hours before bed, if you can, um, that's when you should be having your last meal. Two hours before bed, that, before bed that's your last beverage. Uh, and then one hour before bed, um, last screen. Okay, stole that from Craig Ballantyne, the three, two, one method. Three hours before bed, no, uh, last food. Two hours before bed, last hydration or beverage. Um, one hour before bed, screen's off. Uh, all right, so intermittent fasting. A lot of these questions come from the fact that I, I wanted some people to see this uh, video on controlling calories via a smaller eating window. Um, a lot of people eat. The first thing that wait, they, they do it, when they wake up, they eat. And then the, they're eating all day, snacking all day, and then uh, half an hour before bed, they're having like popcorn or like something. Like, like, so for people that have that issue, taking their eating window and going from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and condensing it from uh, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. is a good idea. And if that's you, then try it. Control your window. Um, it, it's not for everybody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, you, put it that way. I don't do it every day. I do it um, every week to some degree extent. Um, you know, there's days when I don't eat until 2 p.m. Uh, and then I, I have a 2 p.m., like a 6 p.m. and then a 10 p.m. Sometimes I don't go to bed till late. Uh, and then other days where I eat first thing. Just honestly depends. So there's no right way to do it. It's just a template, it's just a type, right? So don't get caught up in this whole like, well, I heard you're not supposed to have, no, stop. Um, make it work for you, okay? Uh, I love intermittent fasting on travel days. Days that I have to drive, days that I have to fly, uh, and I have a morning or um, a flight or, or a car ride, I love intermittent fasting, okay? Um, I will say I succeed more on that day when I have, um, I'm prepared. So I have to have my protein powder with me, have to have my snacks or like my seltzer and my uh, iced coffee with me uh, on the road because that'll, that'll keep me seltzer, iced coffee, um, and then knowing what I'm gonna eat after that uh, is super helpful. Um, and so I find uh, I'm much more likely to not be like, hangry by the time that the intermittent fasting is over um, at the end of, uh, of that eating or fasting window. Um, the science behind it is so clear. It's, it's uh, something that's been done for eons. Um, little known fact, I went to a seminar back in 2011, in uh, I think October 2011, and I, uh, I heard like the first big presentation on, on, um, uh, by Precision Nutrition, which is probably one of the world's leaders in nutrition, on intermittent fasting. And in my newsletter that week, I wrote about intermittent fasting. And, and everyone was like, are you kidding me? What are you talking about? This is stupid. And uh, now it's one of the most searched uh, nutrition protocols on the internet. So um, I'm not saying that I was ahead. I wasn't. I'm just following the world's leaders in nutrition. Um, but more so that like making things work, this is why we don't tell you to you know eat low carb, eat keto, eat... Um, uh, high fat Mediterranean uh, zone Atkins. We don't necessarily want you to go one way here on the nutrition perspective, but we want to help you find something that works for you. And what works for you is something that makes you feel good, number one, and eventually makes you look good. A lot of people don't understand that the, it's not necessarily the same relationship. Something that can make you look good doesn't always make you feel good. Okay, there's a lot of nutrition and fit pros out there that uh, they will tell you that the worst they've ever felt is when they were in their leanest body fat. Okay, so um, finding out the, the routine and the lifestyle and the nutrition protocol for you is just about everything. And so throughout this six weeks, um, I'm always going to encourage people to really just, how do you feel? What's going on? How, do you, how are you sleeping? Are you, is, it, is it interrupting your sleep? Are you hungry? Those are the questions that we have for you guys. I appreciate the questions from you. Keep them coming. That helps us help you be well.